for the big aggressive move out and just you know taking the game. Uh, he just plays a to me textbook perfect Protoss defensive style, which is so clean. Yeah. I think that's absolutely a perfect description of it. But we hop into game number two. And again, we have a bit of a wider map pool than you'd normally see for uh, this particular best of seven. And loser pick, Masa, interestingly enough, picking Overgrowth for game number two. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm trying to actually scroll back up in these, this chat to see the uh, full map list so I can give people an idea. So we... We have the current ladder map pool. I won't re-mention those maps. We have Newkirk Precinct, which we already saw, Belshire Vestige, Frost, Overgrowth, and Daybreak and Whirlwind all available. Uh, actually, now that I now that I look at it, we don't even have some of the current ladder maps like Sequencer and stuff. Oh, so so I guess they sort of switch places. Huh. Interesting though. Um, obviously this is Master's pick here, uh, Fear Dragon, and. You know, that very first game, I feel as if it sort of set the tone for the rest of this series, potentially. Um, you know, I'm feeling some crazy Terran cheese being busted out here shortly. I'm feeling it. I'm hoping so, Tenchi. But here we are, spawning in the bottom left-hand corner of the map. We have the yellow Protoss player. Give it up for Ting's Neeb, setting up one and zero. And in the top right, on the other end of this map, it is going to be your purple Terran player. From Team Elevate, it is going to be Masa. Needs to uh, find a way back into this. And maybe he will, Fear Dragon. Right now, he's going to go for a very quick gas. So, uh, hmm. I'm, feel I'm feeling it, Tenshi. He, he did promise us he was going to probably proxy most, if not all, of the games. Uh, his first barracks, though, is going to be back at home. It's a little bit funny. I mean, do you think that proxy barracks and like reaper play and weird stuff like that can actually be very effective versus protoss i think it, i mean if you kill three or four probes initially in the early game um and just don't hold back on the scv production i think it can set you up fairly well but mm -hmm. i i guess when you go up against a guy like neeb as we've been you know praising him <laughs> for his strong defensive style and maybe that's not the best option but i'm i'm sort of conflicted right because when you go when he has the map selection um, I feel, you know, he has to have something planned, you know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, I hope, I really do hope so. Um, but we'll find out what exactly that plan is going to be. Ooh, factory getting started up. Neeb, of course, scouts us out with his scouting worker, but he also knows there's no commands <laughs> at all. Locks it in. Locks like in it. that probe. Okay, so the early gas, I guess, was just to, so he could rush out this Ooh. factory, and then from there we'll see how he decides to... So in what direction he wants to take it, because Masa, you know, he's not going to be committing on staying onto a dedicated one base play as we see the command center go down. So uh, I do honestly like this from Masa, because it, he is not going to be keeping himself limited in aggressive options right now. But I guess it's all about just pacing himself correctly, because a lot of the time, you know, we'll see Terrence try to power up to some sort of early aggression play. And then if that just falls flat on its face, you know, Protoss gets a third base virtually uncontested. Yeah. I was a little bit surprised, honestly. I think that Neve had a great opportunity to steal the gas geyser of Masa over there, the second gas. Because, I mean, if you see your Terran opponent is like, getting up a fast factory, you know that they're doing something with that gas. So you know that they're uh, either going true. to a fast starport or they're going to be making Widow Mines or Cyclone or something. But well, it looks like he just wants to play his own particular playstyle. He's not going to worry too much about what Masa's doing and uh, going for that Stargate. There should be an Oracle out of that one. Uh, he actually did some really good damage there, eventually, mm -hmm. in uh, the first game with his oracles. So, uh, yeah. But this is nice, I really like this little move here, Dragon. You're just sending out a Widow Mine and putting that um, in a location where you sort of <laughs> expect the, the oracle to fly over. We saw, uh, I believe it was like Beyond do this versus Stats really, mm -hmm. really well not too long ago. Like He's one of the players like, who, who I think really helped sort of popularize it, but it can really pay off. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a misnomer sometimes, right? To just say, oh, well... Pro players always see oh. all of the units all the time. Oh man, the adept is gonna scout out the widow mine. Yeah, that is That's a not nice great. Yeah, yeah. It was really nice there for Neve. Not great for Massa. Yeah. I was gonna say, you know, normally this widow mine is supposed to be just burrowed in a kind of odd location or just catches your opponent off guard because you aren't always watching every single unit at every given moment. It's about knowing when to look at a particular units and if your widow mines are just placed in kind of weird locations your opponent wasn't expecting, they maybe aren't looking at that oracle at the right time. That's when you get those kind of nice free pickoffs, and 
it works even at the highest levels you'd mentioned with the uh, beyond versus stats. Yeah, but now the fact that mm. he did see this, you can see he's very conservative now with his oracles. Yeah. He's actually going to go up to two here and just keep them back. Uh, and, and as much as that is nice here for Massa, uh, because he doesn't have to deal with that pressure now, you can see he's got a good healthy marine count and stuff like that. It's still... I don't think it's bad for Neeb either, to be honest, because um, he can still use these oracles a little bit later in the game. They're, they're definitely not the kind of unit that just falls off um, from the early stages, because you get the revelation, which is so such, such a powerful tool. Um, mm -hmm. Simply because Master didn't really achieve anything now. You see Neeb, he's going to get a very easy third base. Yeah. Third base is going to come down very, very safely. And like you said, he knows that Masa opened up with the factory before Command Center. Oracle is going to get chased back. And I guess the one thing that is kind of going well for Masa is the fact that he has been able to completely forego his missile turrets. He's still got up the engineering bay. He's going to be using it for an upgrade, but uh, did save a few minerals on those missile turrets. And overall, I think this game is actually looking pretty okay for both of these guys. But like you said, earlier third base for Neeb is going to gradually put him ahead. Now, Fear Dragon, looking at what Masa is doing, I'm actually a little worried for him, right? The composition that Neeb, you know, time and time again dominates people with is, of course, this Phoenix Adept style, and it is really powerful. But one of the weaknesses to this style is that it does heavily fall off in the late game. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but it does look as if Masa's actually gearing up to go for a big, you know, committed mid game push. But this is when this composition shines in strength, so that would actually be a crucial mistake here out of the Taran if he decides to go for it. I think he should perhaps try to go for the later game, but. The third base is already done for Neeb. I mean, what kind of decision do you make here, really? What is even the right decision at this point, Fear Dragon? You know, it's so difficult, Tenchi, because I always think of Masa. He's a good... He's not a bad player when it comes to late game, but he is strongest, I think, as a mid-game player. And there's always that question, do you really want to take Neeb to a macro game? Do you really oh, yeah. want to try and play him <laughs> in, like, a 15-minute or 20-minute game? It's kind of funny, because... As much as I, I wholeheartedly agree with you on the whole Phoenix Adept thing eventually falling off, but Neve is one of those players that, interestingly enough, you ever talk to him, he really believes and thinks that, you know what, I no, it's actually really easy to transition now. You start, take your gas geysers, you start building up a lot of gas, you throw down Templar archives, and it's actually a pretty smooth transition, but I don't know, Tenshi, this, this attack, I feel like it, you're right, it's going to be really hard to make work the way I think Masa needs it to. Oh, this is so sick, by the way, that Masa just Ooh. so attentive, so he yeah. activates all of those stasis towards. Now, the tank sieging up here in decent position. As you see that, uh, maybe he's just going to be posturing a little bit with his adept. These phoenixes, though, as soon as they commit, he is going to go in for the big liftoffs. And here we go, Fear Dragon. He needs to go into this attack. The adepts are going to be spreading out a little bit. Good stim backing up before Masa, but is it going to be enough? Oh, a lot of the adepts getting taken out of the fight almost immediately. Good focus fire also on the Phoenix that was lifting up the siege tanks. And even though the siege tanks have been taken out, Masa is starting to make some headway. Yeah, but Neeb just had four warp gates finish up with another big warp in. Will it be enough to clean this up? He doesn't have another photon overcharge on this closest pylon. Uh, he's actually going to break this down. So this higher right hand side of this third base nexus is going to be very exposed. The reinforcements for Neve are coming in a lot faster. Ooh, Liberator joining the fray. Now, it's going to be vulnerable to those Phoenix, but a good siege up in well-protected position behind those Marines could really make it a lot harder for Neve to actually get the, uh, the the space that he needs to maneuver around with these Adepts. Both of these players now go. The Dance of Death. Both of them need to be so <laughs> careful to not overstep, but like you pointed out, Fear Dragon, the Defender's Advantage is still here with the Protoss. With all of these war prints, again, we're going to have a similar situation like we had there in game number one, that if he overstays his welcome, Neepy's just going to completely overrun him, and here we go. I think this is when he pulls the trigger. Uh, it may very well be. You can see Moss is desperately trying to run around. He may even just pick up some of these marines into a meta that can leave, but you can't leave. There's so many Phoenix. It's funny enough, though, Moss is just coming in with another Liberator. He has two Widow Mines further back. I think he's trying to... He's hoping that he can bait Neep into them, but... No, Neep throws down the revelation. He's not going to be falling for any of those shenanigans. So well defended by Neep, and now he's going to pounce on this again. Massive connections from these oh. Widow Mines. Is Neep over yeah. right now, Fear Dragon? He's actually taking oh my God. so much damage from this turret that's right beneath this Liberator. He didn't see it. Oh my God. Oh my, this is actually almost working out for Masa. It's so unbelievably oh. close. Another great Widow Mine hit. Might have just turned the tide for the battle. More Marines coming in from the north side, stemming forward, taking out the last of the Adepts. 
And oh my god, Tenchi, most of the Phoenix have died. That was something that I don't think Neve can really easily replace. No, you are absolutely right there, man. That is actually a massive loss. The Phoenixes make up the backbone to this whole composition. You know, you get the critical mass and then you focus the resources somewhere else into upgrades and stuff. But now, this is actually a really tough spot for Neve to find himself in. He's going to be on very basic tech. And, you you know, we're already seeing this from us. His army is already a little bit... A little bit more uh, technical. However, a counter attack from Lee coming in towards the third base is going to force Massa to pull the uh, CVs off of mining. Try to split his attention in two places. This is going to be really annoying for Massa to deal with because he's been on this rally all the way across the map. And you can see he pulls back a majority of his units. The missile turret, the widow mines are all going to get cleaned up. Even the adepts on the other side of the map giving chase while uh, Massa is just a little bit busy trying to clean up the adepts inside of his mineral lines. He's losing a lot over here. And Masa was looking to be in such a good position too. He got a head on upgrades with a plus one armor finishing up. He had done a lot of damage over at Neeb's third and he had established his own, but now it feels like that kind of lead is slipping from his grasp. Yeah, and then of course one of the dangers now with this sort of composition for the Protoss is that you, once you force the Terran back, it's really easy for Protoss to get over to the enemy side of the map. As you can see already, more units being shifted across, but I think now this is actually Neeb's time to pace himself and not overextend, uh, because you can see now the Widow Mines are here, um, the entire army from Masa has been reconsolidated, and I mean at the end of the day, Fear Dragon, if you look at the army supply, Masa is effectively doubling his opponent in that right now. He no definitely has, uh, it definitely still has a bigger army supply for sure, almost 20 supply up, and he's going to continue to push a little bit further in, even shading forward, I actually really oh thought he was going to be shading back, but he might be over committing over here like you were saying, and the Adept's going to finish their shade, commit into the natural, eat a Widowmine shot to the face, and I think Moss is actually going to be relatively happy with these trades. So much of this comes back to that one engagement, Fear Dragon, where Neeb lost all of his Phoenixes. Now you can see he's struggling, he's trying to just buy himself more time so that he can get back into the game, but back at home, I mean, Liberator sieging up, killing four probes, he's forcing the Stalker Warp in, Liberator's going to get out of there. I think that Neeb just overextended and kind of threw away more than he needed to. He's, uh, he's in a bit of trouble here in terms of the army. Yeah, it's a really difficult situation for Neeb. It looked like he may have been able to do a bit more damage. I mean, he was buying himself a lot of time, and he wanted to prevent Masa from moving out across the map. It was like we were saying before, the army supply was in favor of Masa, but when you, when you try and buy time, sometimes you end up giving up a little bit too much army supply. And now we can even see Masa is sitting up before just 20 army supply. Now he's almost 40 army supply ahead. Yeah, and bear in mind here, Fear Dragon, plus two attack is done. So he's also going to be heading upgrades. He's not going to care about Proto Nova Charge. He's just going to dart on forward here. And this bio is tearing into all of these gateway units. Neeb is going to try to go for the Desperation Liftoffs, but it's not going to be enough. Oh. The my connections are excellent. And this should be all she wrote. Another big warp in here from Neep will keep him in this game for a little bit longer. For how long, Fear Dragon? I don't know, Tenshi. This is actually getting a little bit dicey for Masa in some ways. Look at the lack of medevacs, the sustainability. This army is stimmed to death. There's only three medevacs out on the map right now. Two of them just came out back at home. And remember that proxy gateway is still on the other side of the map. If Neve even finds a couple of warpins, even two warpins that he can spare, he can start putting on some more pressure, pulling Masa back and punching him for this kind of rally forward style. But as you were saying, he still does need to buy some more time. That is the name of the game for Neve. Yeah, even plus two armor done now for the Terran. So two two upgrades versus only one one Protoss. This Nexus is forfeit. Oh, that is gonna fall now. He began moving out across the map. So I mean, he's he's not the kind of guy seemingly here that just lets the pressure get to him, where he sits back at home scared in his base. But maybe that would be the better option because remember that <laughs> Master's army here in the middle of the map is so big. Uh oh, looks like we're getting oh. a momentary lag. Daddy, please. Oh. Oh, daddy. Wait, that's, um, I guess it depends on the context of when you say something like that, but <laughs> that, just for me to say, like, oh, daddy, please. I felt, oh, uh, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, Tenchi. I, I'm, just <laughs> reading the name on, I'm just reading the name on the screen. You're, uh, you're, you're so pure, the dragon. You're so pure, <laughs> so, so gentle and kind, <laughs> like a butterfly on a summer day. <laughs> I promise daddy will come back. I hope so, um, because if not, I think he's he's our observer. Um, <laughs> uh, I thought no, I think proverb is our observer. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 
By the way, big shout out to Proper, a wonderful, wonderful production man. Yeah, this is uh, true. Daddy Please is the admin. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. nothing of importance was lost then, Fair Dragon. Game wow! Finished. Savage, Tenchi, savage. But okay. You know, I used to be a tournament admin back in the day. Oh, I'm not. I'm not an uh, admin in this game. Uh, I was never only loved. Admin can unpause. I am not an. Admin. Oh, they can't. They they can't see us. I know, but I'm trying to talk to our admin. Oh yeah. Oh no, the admin oh, wait, is the he's only out. one. Wait, 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 wait. Can't... The admin just lagged out, and he was the only one that can unpause. Is this actually? Wait, can't Neeb unpause the game? No, because only referees can unpause. Uh, I think the hmm. Um, I guess we'll lagged out is the only one who was a ref, so nobody can unpause. Oh my god! <laughs> unless uh, proverb, unless proverb is. I mean, Tenshi, you're gonna hit the unpause button, right? Right? Wait, no, but okay, proverb. Okay, proverb is not. Tenshi, you're our last hope. I can't, man. If he, like, if he's, if he's no, a wait, proverb, like... no, pro no, wait, 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 proverb, no, that's true. Proverb can't talk to them unless he's an admin. Proverb. Exactly, and he can, so he can unpause. Pa pause so we're saved. Pause break. We're saved. Okay, we're okay. God, that was tense. Oh, that was scary. For a moment, I thought we just found a weird situation. Um, it's the pause break button proverb. If if it's easier, you can hit uh, F10, and then I think you'll pull up the menu, and there should be a unpause button there. Oh, there we go. Okay, oh, there we go. go. Nope. All right, the game ready. started. Oh, uh, God. Lots of liftoffs, shading forward. Eva's going to dive onto this, actually. And uh, the medevac count, like you pointed out, their fear dragon wasn't really there in number, but he still seemingly has enough. As most of the ground army here for the Protoss is going to get cleaned up. Yeah, not Ooh. that many marines left over, so he's not able to really give too much chase to the Phoenix. So most of them will get out of their line, but as you were saying, all the adepts have now fallen, and Neeb needs to rally in some more of these reinforcements from his natural. Oh, fear dragon, hey man. Even though the yeah. Protoss lost his ground army, look at Master's medevac count again. Down to only two. Oh god, and his army still is very stemmed up. Although, Masa has gotten up a fourth expansion. You know what I would love to see right now, Tenshi? I'd love to see a second starport on a reactor. Produce four medevacs at a time. Just play catch up a little bit. Oh yeah. No, I, I completely agree. That would actually be so nice, man. Um, because as you can see, he's actually really struggling to get the medevacs out on the field. and. In good numbers. These Phoenixes, even though Neep has been struggling a little bit in this game, he's actually been doing such a good job in just focusing down these medevacs because he knows that that's what gives the Terror an army the, stay, uh, the staying power and sustainability in the field. And that's sort of a good way to, you know, keep the turn from, from pushing you, which is uh, what Neep effectively needs to just keep from happening at this point. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, the other thing that is giving Masa a little bit of sustainability are the fact that his upgrades are pretty significantly ahead of Neeb. Neeb is starting to get up that plus two weapons, but in the meanwhile, you take a look, Masa has plus three weapons and has plus two armor. Actually, he's leading up in upgrades by two, a total of two upgrades, in probably the matchup where upgrades matter the most of any of the matchups. Oh yeah, you are absolutely right there, dude. Uh, again, Neeb is going to dart on forward, and he oh. does commit to this yet again, but there we are! Massa picks up a game and equalizes the scoreline one to one. Wow! And uh, 